Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. If people are still coming in, we'll give people just a moment. But um, just so very excited to have you all here today. It's a wonderful day. It's a beyond a wonderful day. There is so much goodness in this day. I am so excited. We're so excited that you joined us. So excited that you're joining us here on Twitch. And those that 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 um, couldn't make it in this time and are joining later on um, on YouTube, you two are with us, and we're just so glad that you're joining us today. Welcome, Fee Glow, Ever Glow, Fallen Star. Good to see you. Oh, hello, hello. Welcome. Good to see you too. Hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Love the hearts. Hello. Thank you, Jinko. Hello. Hello, hello. Come on in. Take a seat. All right. All right. You're <laughs> mm. So uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, before we jump in, we have a few little announcements, and then we're going to um, a little uh, look into Matthew 22, let it see what it has for us today. Um, but before we do so, I just want to take a moment um, and and pray, and so here we go. And Father God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for more things than I even realize I should be grateful for. Thank you, thank you, thank you for each and every person that that could be doing anything with this time, but they come here. Um, to 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 know you more, to spend time um, with with their brothers and sisters in Christ, to to spend time nurturing these relationships and our relationship with you. Um, wow, thank you, uh, thank you, Christ Jesus, for 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 being our perfect sacrifice, for being willing to come here and 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 live and and suffer and die for us. When you absolutely did not have to, this willing choice of yours because of your love for us, Lord Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for um, the special blessings I personally have received today, um, getting to be able to see uh, such good friends that, that God, you have have joined in my life and, and that have been um, a little far away. And Lord, you blessed me with their presence today. And thank you for, for the work that you're doing um, in your children um, without saying names, you know, God, um, just the voice that we hear um, and, and, and someone that we love um, that couldn't speak before, that, that, that now through your power um, is 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 speaking to us today this voice that is so beautiful to hear so uplifting so this voice that is is a is a picture of your power is a picture of your love i don't know how to describe it but god thank you thank you thank you thank you and thank you for the work that i know that you're doing in all of us and 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 the results that, that we are sure to see, the fruit that comes from that. Um, I'm excited to see the, what, what's to come. Um, I can go on and on, and I'm sorry. But Lord, we just really, truly want to want to thank you today. And we just ask that you uh, open our, our hearts, open our minds as we go through Matthew 22, that you teach us what we need to know. Lord, help me to speak what you want me to share um, in a way that, that those that need to understand something can understand that thing. Um, speak through me, work through me. And um, I just thank you for doing that. In your precious, powerful, and loving, and wonderful name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So welcome, Amen. everyone. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Awesome. So it's very important. Everybody know. Hey, good to see you, Lita, and welcome. But everybody here is welcome. Period. Everybody. Um, no exclusions. Uh, it doesn't matter if you believe in God or not. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter where you're going. It doesn't matter any of it. What matters is that you are here, and that is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And we're really glad to have you here um 
also want to just a couple of announcements, uh, such as if you haven't done so already, joining our Discord server. This is where uh, the community meets throughout the week because we don't have only Sunday services, but we have other events throughout the week um, from gaming. Uh, I like this little thing. I'm not sure it up or I heard it copying it, but the a church that plays together stays together. <laughs> Um, and so it really, truly is good. It's, it's good for us to spend time, um, just nurturing our relationships with one another and spending time and play and joy and laughter. It's awesome. So, um, during the week we have times to play together. Um, we have other groups that may be, uh, like a Bible study or, um, we have, uh, in discord, a prayer. Oh, this is a big one. Um, if you go into Discord and you're in need of prayer, this is a global church, a global community. So people are around every hour of every day. And if you're needed of uh, need of prayer, I encourage you to go in there and um and 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 let let us know so that we can pray for you. And um last but not least, how do you get to Discord? Well, it's super easy. Uh vrchurch.org or mmo.church. We, that's two of our websites. We're VR MMO Church. They started separate, but we're joined together under one ministry. Um, that's, we have VR ministries here in um, VR chat and in alt space, but we also have ministries in MMOs. And if you're into MMOs, really encourage you to tap into one of these ministries. We have one in Rust and one in Final Fantasy. So if that's something that you're into, um, MMOs, or maybe it's just something you've been thinking about trying but haven't done so yet, um, in our Discord server, you'll find out how to join those communities in Final Fantasy and in Rust. Uh, and it all starts with the website, vrchurch.org or mmo.church. And so much more. There's so much more I can jabber on about um, the, the gifts that we've been given, the opportunities we've been given. Um, with each other, uh, I could go on all day, but we only have this little bit of time. So I'm going to jump into Matthew 22. And, and today's the day I, I do the slides correctly. Today's the day. All right. So starting here. Um, oh, before we jump in, I do context. <laughs> if you missed last week, Matthew 21. Jesus is talking to the chief priests and other the Bible. Jewish you are leaders. Of God, and you are a Jezebel who don't no. obey the instruction of God. So I, I yeah, I'm not sure Israel. what to do, how to to do this, but I think you guys know how to do the little. Um, I'd love to have you here if 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 you could be, um, you know, quiet and respectful. Um, but if not, then yeah, we can well, do the thing. Using okay. their voice. They gotta hide behind this whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, so. That's okay. Thank you for doing the, you know, I'm not sure. I don't have the ability to remove people. Um, but I think we We're can do the voting thing like and it could do. be done. <laughs> yeah. Cool, I got it. Okay. We should pray for them. <laughs> so we, we absolutely should, and we absolutely will. So let's take this time um, while the process is happening. Oopsie, to do that. Um, let's do this and that. And yes, Father God, Lord, um, we come to you now just with um, prayer for this this person here that you feel their heart with your love lord help them to see the real you who you really are um you are a god that that loves each and every one of us immensely no matter no matter what uh, male or female um your love is equal uh in each of us, and your love is unimaginable in each of us. And Lord, touch this person that they may know your covenant with us, your new covenant that we are all saved through you, Christ, through your sacrifice for us. 
that we are not bound by the Jewish law, but we are bound by you. We do not follow a list of rules, but we follow you, Jesus. And Lord, help this person to, to see this and, and, and understand this, because in doing so, there is this uh, freedom, a freedom that, that lifts the burdens that we're carrying around in our lives. And I would just, we ask you help this person to, to see that so that they too can have their burdens lift, so that they too can truly experience the real you, not the misguided you. Um, that their hearts just be filled with, with love and joy and peace. And um, I'm excited to, you know, to see when this is done, um, their, their motivation to share you with the world, even though maybe misguided, um, that passion is there. So when, when they realize really truly who you are, man, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. They are going to go out and share your light like crazy. Um, and we thank you for that. So thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. The passion to go around and do that is amazing so like if only they could truly understand what they're what they're trying to share um they could be like like paul to saul um is what i picture paul who was actively fighting against christ who 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 um who saw jesus who spoke with him who realized who he was and the passion he had for persecuting Christians. He turned and he took that passion and he used it to share the gospel. So I'm just saying, I can imagine if that person can, can truly understand who God is, um, man, they could do amazing, amazing things in sharing God's kingdom with the world. So back to Matthew 22, Matthew 22. Again, this is important context that um, he, this is a continuation. He's talking to uh, the Jewish chief priests and, and the leading Jewish um, leaders. So Jesus told several other stories. He was telling stories in Matthew 21 or parables, as we know them, to show what the kingdom of heaven is like. For instance, he said, it can be illustrated by the story of a king who prepared a great wedding dinner for his son. And so we'll stop there real quick and just take a moment and let's look at this through our human eyes first. Through our human eyes, a king has invited you or me um, to come to the wedding feast of a prince, of a prince. How grand this must be, how elaborate and and everything must be the the food that is the best of the best of the best and and things i didn't even know exist i'm gonna be able to eat when i go to this amazing feast and and the bounty is is so incredibly full that you don't have to worry about if you're hogging all the shrimp you eat all the shrimp you eat because there's just never ending shrimp this amazing experience where just the entertainment is 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 the best and music like you've never heard before and and just the energy in the room with so many people gathered for such a joyous occasion everyone filled with so much joy it becomes a, a infectious and you and you can feel it like a you could actually feel that joy in a form of energy um in the air to be invited to such a thing is also not only so so grand i can't even imagine what it would be like to be at a royal wedding um but also the honor you know not not everybody gets is is invited to to such a thing um i don't know about you but i personally have never been invited to, to a royal wedding so this is a major honor to be, be invited to such a thing so that's looking at it in in our human eyes and that's what jesus is trying to do to help us to understand Something that we can't see with our human eyes, but is there. And so he uses the human vision illustration to help us better understand what he's talking about. So that's the human version. Now we look at what he's really talking about. The king is God. God the Father, who prepared a great wedding dinner for his son. And his son is, well, his son, Christ Jesus. 
And this great wedding dinner represents the kingdom of heaven. So we have that context. And we're going to continue. Many guests were invited, and when the banquet was ready, he sent messengers to notify everyone that it was time to come, but all refused. So he sent other servants to tell them, everything is ready, hurry. Um, I'm jumping the gun, everything is ready, and the roast is in the oven, hurry. And so this many guests that's in, in this story is referring to the Jewish people, as they were God's chosen people, and they were were the first ones to be um, told and shared the gospel. And, and uh, it was laid out prior to Jesus even coming um, to earth to live, to die, and rise again for us. Um, prophets prophets um, were sent to, to prepare them that, this, that the Messiah is coming. And to prepare them so when Jesus came, they would hopefully accept him. But they did not all refused. And so he sent the other servants and these other servants. This is talking, it's a timeline of the past, what happened in the Old Testament prior to Jesus's coming. Um, the prophets that were sent, but the refusal to accept these things from, from, from the Jewish people. And, and then it's now talking about the future after Jesus's death, burial, and resurrection. These other other servants that are going out and again trying to share the gospel, God's heavenly kingdom, and, and and how to be there with the Jewish people again. But this is talking about the the disciples and and other people. There were more than just the disciples. Other ministers of the gospel were sent out, but again, all refused. But we haven't got to the all refused. I'm jumping the gun. Yes. So the roast is in the oven. Hurry, hurry, hurry. It's it's amazing. You can't, you don't want to miss this. But the guests he had invited merely laughed and went about their business. One to his farm, another to his store. Others beat him, um, beat up his messengers and treated them shamefully, even killing some of them. So uh, these guests that, that he had, that laughed it off and went about their, their business, um, this is, uh, they simply didn't believe, although they were, were, were told and prepared for the coming Messiah. When he came, they just, and almost like people, you'll hear people re refer to Christianity as a fairy tale. This was the mindset that, that, that the Jewish, many, or most, uh, many, we'll say many, many of the Jewish people, this is the mindset um, that they had. They just, they just didn't believe it. It off. They were more focused on on everything. No, oh, I got to do this and that. More focused on the worldly things, and so they turned their back from God and went out away from Him into the world to do the worldly things. And we all, yes, have to do. You know, we have to work. We have to eat. And blah blah blah. But they were putting these worldly things above God. They were more concerned about their crops and what's happening at the store and, 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 and at school and did they remember to do this and, oh, I still have to do that. They were so distracted by worldly things that they couldn't see the truth and turned their backs from God. And that was the best case scenario. Others even beat up his messengers, treated them shamefully, and even killed them. This is exactly what happened. Jesus is telling them what will happen. At the time he is alive and he's telling them what will happen. This is going to happen. The disciples and other ministers of the gospel are going to go out again and try and share the gospel with you, the Jewish people. And they will, and they did do this. Treat them shamefully, torture, even kill. Um, those that were trying to simply share the gospel, trying to invite them in to God's kingdom. And this word invite, you don't want to miss this. Invite, that's, that's important. And I almost forgot to bring that context in here. To invite. 
That is like when you're inviting someone to your own wedding here, you invite them because you want them. You want them there. You want to share this with them and you want to share this moment with them because you love them. You care for that person. You don't invite people that you don't, you know, you're, you're not fond of. No, um, you invite those you care about, those that you love. And so this invitation, um, to, to all of us and to God's kingdom through Jesus is, is exactly that. It's an invitation um, stemming from God's love from us. And it's an invitation. It is not uh, a, a ticket you can buy. This is, this is gift. This is given. It's an invitation. Um, and so those two things can't be missed in here. So, so the disciples in this part of the, of the story, the disciples and other ministers who were sharing the gospel were trying to give something so wonderful that we can't even wrap our brains around it. This precious gift, but yet they refused. Again. So as we continue, then the angry king sent out his army and destroyed the murderers and burned their city. And this is also talking about, at that time, the future, about 70 years after Jesus' death, the destruction of Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem was the temple. And the temple was the center of the Jewish religion, was the symbol of all that it meant. And the temple was the system of things. And we're going to talk more about the system of things here in a couple of weeks, where the chief priests, these extra special people, could access this place. And then people that are of that status could access this place. And people of these lower statuses can only come here. And even worse, the Gentiles, they couldn't come, come past here at all. And so there's this pyramid-type structure that Jesus is coming, or came <laughs> at this time, coming uh, to 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 destroy, to do something new, to do something so much better, where we are all on equal footing with each other, where we have we don't have to go to someone to go to someone who can go to God, where we can go to God anywhere, everywhere. He is when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, His Spirit is in you. You don't have to even go to him. He is here. And so there's a lot. This says so many things about the destruction of Jerusalem. It speaks more words than I have time to even speak on today. So I'll just continue. <laughs> and he said to his servants, the wedding feast is ready and the guests I invited aren't worthy of the honor. And they're not worthy of the honor, not because because they're doing this or that. They're not worthy of the honor because they simply wouldn't accept it. So they aren't wor the wedding feast is ready and the guests I invited aren't worthy of the honor. Now, go out to the street corners and invite everyone you see. Everyone. Everyone. No exceptions. Everyone is invited. There is nobody who is not invited to come to the kingdom of heaven. So the disciples and then other ministers of the gospel went out and did exactly that. Invited everyone they see. And we continue to this day to go out and invite everyone we see. But the guests he had invited merely, oopsie. Aha. So the servants did and brought in all they could find, good and bad alike. And the banquet hall was filled with guests. And so this <clears throat> phrase, good and bad alike, it gets misunderstood um, a lot, I think. Um, Jesus is not saying good people and bad people. So we come back to the context of who he's speaking to. He's speaking to the chief priests and the other Jewish leaders. and. At that time, um, the thought process uh, of the Jewish people were that we are good and everyone else is bad. They were completely uh, cut off um, 
from from everyone else. There were Jews and there were Gentiles. If you weren't Jewish, you were Gentile. So everybody else is a Gentile. And and they very deliberately um, kept as, as separated as they could because in their minds, they were good. Everyone else is bad. There were all these rules, including they couldn't even eat with a Gentile because that Ugh. what's the word for it that the the would rub off on them like like you couldn't even eat with them because they are so bad so um oh i'm lo- i'm losing the word um oh i'll come back to we'll just call it bad because they're so bad um and so when he's saying this good and bad alike this is him saying jews and gentiles alike not good and bad people but another way of saying everyone, Jews and Gentiles alike. And to come to this wedding feast and eat with Jews and Gentiles alike to the Jewish people would be insane. Couldn't even, no, 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 no. That's breaking these rules. And I would like to tell you how I came to this understanding. Because, you know, many people say, oh, it's, and, and it's nice to, it's nice to think about. Oh, yeah, I invited the good people and the bad people. Um, that's that's nice but i don't think it's correct here and the reason being is because there are no good and bad people how much bad do you have to do before you're considered bad and how much good do you have to do before you're considered good again this idea of good and bad people is looking at each other through our eyes our human eyes instead of looking at each other through God's eyes. So we develop our own little rules of what makes someone bad and what makes someone good. But if you were here in Matthew 19, Jesus told this parable about this um, young man, this very rich young man who um, came to Jesus. And when he addressed him, he called him good master. And Jesus said to him, when you call me good, you are calling me God. Because truly, only God, God alone is good. And this is true. Only God alone is good. We aren't good or bad. We are human. God is good. We are human. So when he's referring good and bad, he's talking to the Jewish people in the language that they would speak it themselves. The Jews and the Gentiles, the good and the bad, everyone is invited. Everyone is here and everyone is eating together, which is shocking for them. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he noticed a man who wasn't wearing the wedding robe that was provided for him. And that's super important. I love that it's underlined provided for him. He wasn't wearing the wedding robe that was provided for him. Friend, he asked, how does it happen that you are here without a wedding robe? And the man had no reply. Then the king said to his aides, bind him hand and foot and throw him out into the outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. And this section too, I think can be missed understood and is often misunderstood um i i believe uh so um first of all the wedding robe the wedding robe this represents righteousness righteousness is to be made right by god to be to be made made right by him in his eyes again we're not talking about our worldly eyes our earthly eyes we're talking about his eyes to be made right, that he looks at us and we are right with him. Um, and for some context to, to, no, first I'll tell you what some people believe this means. Some people believe that the reason it's so bad that the guy wasn't wearing the wedding robe is because that represents that this guy is a Christian. He's accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior, but he's not walking the walk. He's still sinning. He's not changed his ways. 
that's one interpretation of it. And in that context, that person is responsible for their righteousness. That person in that context, I don't believe this, but this is some beliefs. That person is responsible for dressing as they should, doing as they should, following all the rules, making themselves righteous before God. And interestingly enough, when you read um, some of the commentaries who, who have this understanding in the scripture itself, it doesn't even say the word provided for him. It just says he wasn't wearing the wedding robe because this provided for him is the key. Pro this wedding robe that is provided to them is Christ, is the Holy Spirit that when you truly accept, when you really believe and you truly accept him as your Lord and Savior, and you know that he died on the cross for you and that through him, him, your sins are just, they're forgiven so much so, they are gone. Um, when you do this, God um, gives you the Holy Spirit. He sends, as Jesus refers to it, a helper to you. And his God Spirit literally lives inside of you. And it is the Spirit that the that changes your heart and your mind. If you know the scripture that, that foretells of Jesus's coming um, in the Old Testament, it talks about um, God saying, I will write my law on your heart and your mind. And when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and he gives you the spirit so that he, he may reside in you, he writes his law on his heart and mind. The Jewish people are used to a system of things where they earn their righteousness. They had 613 laws that they had to follow, and then there were all these very specific consequences if you broke them. And they would have to offer blood sacrifices um, to cleanse them of, of, of their wrongdoing so that they may be right with God. Only our human selves can't do that. We are, we're just imperfect. I can't even remember 613 laws, let alone follow them. And God knows that. And that was never his, his purpose. The, the second covenant that Jesus coming to live and die and rise again for us was always, always the plan. But this is what the Jewish people were, were used to. So in this context, when someone understands this as the person not wearing the wedding robe means they, they weren't obeying God well enough, that is contrary to the grace, the truth of the gospel, the grace that we are given. Um, and so that's, to me, the, the furthest understanding of it. Then there's another understanding that's super duper close, where people think that that not wearing the wedding robe represents, um, you know, being a Christian, but having no love in your heart. And this, we're getting warmer here, but not quite there, because that's not possible. You can't put your faith in Jesus and not have love in your heart. It's not possible. Because as I just described, when you do so, God gives you the Holy Spirit which is his spirit that resides in you. And he is love. He is more love than we can comprehend. He is love. So when he resides in you, it's impossible for you to not have love in your heart. So we're getting closer, closer, and much better understanding than the you must do everything right in order to be made righteous and enter the kingdom of God. And yes, you must have love in your heart to enter the kingdom of God. But... That love comes from your faith in him. Um, so you can't have want, you can't have your faith in him and, 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 and not the love. It's a given. So here we get into the nitty-gritty of why I understand the scripture a little differently. So as I explained, the, the Jewish people were, were used to um, trying to achieve a righteousness through following a set of rules. And in, in the gospel, um, 
we now are given this gift of grace that we can't earn because we can't earn it. We can never deserve it. We will always fall short. But through our face in Christ Jesus, we are forgiven of all things. And but the Jewish people were following Christ like they were when it, when it keeps saying the word all in the story. That's not true in reality. Not all Jewish people rejected Jesus. I mean, look at his disciples. They're Jews, right? And then there was also other Jewish people, not the Jewish leaders and not the chief priests, but there were other Jewish people who heard the gospel and, 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 and followed Jesus and followed him quite literally from town to town. Um, but some of them couldn't give up the notion that they had to earn their grace by following the law. And so they, they had their, they didn't put their full faith in Jesus. They had one foot in Jesus and the other in the law. And this not wearing the wedding robe represents, in my understanding, exactly this. One foot in the door, one foot out. Back to the parable of the, 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 the rich man, when he approached Jesus and said, um, good master. He asked him a question, how do I enter the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus went on to tell him, you know, you know, follow my commandments. And, um, and, and he says, well, well what, what commandments? And Jesus lists a few of the many, many commandments. And, and the man is like, oh, fantastic. I do all of those perfectly. Like anyone could do them perfectly. But this young man claims he does them all perfectly. And he says, what else must I, must I do to enter the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus says, well, just give away everything you own and follow me. And the rich man was just devastated because he knew he couldn't do it. He couldn't give away everything he owns. And so he left sad because he couldn't enter the kingdom of heaven. But he's missing it. The point was not the this and that and the other thing. The point was follow me. You cannot achieve it on your own, is what he's saying. But through me, I will just give it to you. Just follow me, just like that. And so this is the context. And then I'm going to read from Galatians. I know I'm going long here, but the rest of it's kind of short. So I'm going to read Galatians, um, which will hopefully explain what I'm trying to convey maybe better than I can. So Christ has made a free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get all tied up again in the chains of slavery to Jewish laws and ceremonies. Because the ceremonies, the, the, the um, uh, traditions and ceremonies, those were held at equal weight of the Jewish law. It was just as important that you did this and that in a ceremonial way as it was to not murder someone. But as I get back into the scripture, so don't get all tied up again in the chains of slavery to Jewish laws and ceremonies. L listen to me, for this is serious. If you're counting on circumcision, like a number one right up there, Jewish law that must be followed. If you're counting on circumcision and keeping the Jewish laws to make you right with God, then Christ cannot save you. I'll say it again. Anyone trying to find favor with God by being circumcised must always obey every other Jewish law. Or Christ is useless to you if you are counting on clearing your debt to God by keeping those laws. You are lost from God's grace. But we, by the help of the Holy Spirit, are counting on Christ's death to clear away our sins and make us right with God. And we to whom Christ has given eternal life don't need to worry about whether we have been circumcised or not, or whether we are obeying the Jewish ceremonies or not. For all we need is faith working through love. This is saying exactly that. If you are trying to be made right with God, if you're putting your eggs in, in this basket by following the law, then you must do it perfectly. And we all know that we can't. You can't 
have both. This is this is equivalent to to say me just agreeing with every religion in the world, just in case. I'm not really sure which one is right, so I'm just gonna like you know worship all of them. That's the equivalent here. You either follow Christ; He is either your Lord and Savior. You either depend on Him. And through him, you enter the kingdom or you depend on yourself. And that's the choice we all have to make. And that's the choice that the Jewish people at the time were really struggling with. They were, they were just having a hard time. Surely they had pressure from other people as well. Many other people, most other people, pressure to, to, to be made right by God, by following the laws. And so this person not wearing the wedding robe, I believe, is someone claiming they're a Christian claiming to accept Christ Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but still putting their eggs in the law basket, still just making sure to follow those laws to be made right by God. And I'm not saying that, you know, all the laws are, you know, whatever, chaos, go, murder, rape, still, blah, blah. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is when God gives you his spirit, when he dwells in you, he changes your heart and your mind. And you don't want to go murder people. He helps guide you to want what is good versus what is bad. You don't not murder someone because a law told you not to. Again, you want, you don't do it because you don't want to. He, he changes us. It's a beautiful and wonderful thing. And so that's what I believe this means. And then this idea of the outer darkness, being thrown into the outer darkness. This is a separation from God. And yes, weeping and gnashing of teeth. What a horrible thing to be separated from him. Christ will literally light up the kingdom, the, the, the new heaven and the new earth. It is, he will, his being will provide the light. It, it states in, in Revelations about there will be no need for a sun and no need for a moon, for Christ will light up it all. And when you think really cool about the, 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 the really cool images that are coming in from that new telescope, where we could see further back in time, further to the beginning of the universe, we're seeing more light that is more distant than we've ever seen before. And I can't even begin to try and tell you how many miles away that is or how much time is between that and us. It's an unimaginable number. So to be thrown into the darkness means you're that far away from God. You're that far, so far that you're not even catching the tiniest glimpse of the edges of his light. And yeah, so other people might have other interpretations, but that is what I believe this throwing in the outer darkness to mean. It is a separation from God. So unless you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, unless you put your faith in him and not in the law, then you will be separated from God. And it's a horrible thing. And yes, in that horrible, sad unimaginable time of separation from God, there will be weeping, gnashing of teeth. Don't want to be separated from him. So as we continue, friend. Oopsie. Or have I read this part? I, I read the part about the separation from God, right? Yeah, I did. I did. I just talked on it. I hope I read on it. So as we continue, then the Pharisees met together to try to think of some way to trap Jesus, which they were always doing, by the way, some way to trap Jesus into saying something for which they could arrest him. They decided to send some of their men along with the Herodians to ask him this question. Sir, we know you are very honest and teach the truth regardless of the consequences without fear or favor. Now tell us, is it right to pay taxes to the Roman government or not? I think of the Star Wars, um, it's a trap. <laughs> That's what they're trying to lay this trap. It's a trap. And what they, what they, they, they think they're, they're squeezing him into this corner where no matter what he says, it's not going to go well for him. If he says, no, it's not 
right to pay the taxes, then they're going to run off and tell the Roman government. And they are going to come and arrest him. And they're going to arrest him because uh, uh, on the grounds of, of starting a tax revolt, encouraging um, the people to not pay the, the tax. And this tax is because, the, you know, prior to this, Rome conquered, um, well, almost everything, to be honest. It was huge, everyone, so far and so wide. And the Jewish people used to have their own kings and their own governments and their own everything. They were an independent people until Rome conquered them. And now they were, are subject to Rome. They are subject to Rome's laws, and and they are subject to the to the taxes that they must pay to Rome. And okay, so when you are conquered, when you're conquered as a people, that is not a pleasant experience. This is war. This is oh, the violence, the hardship, the 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 losing of your loved ones, the the hunger, the pain um it's a horrible thing to endure to be taken over by by someone else so this is these the jewish people are not big fans of the roman government they really 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 despise it they despise having to be subject to it uh they despise having to pay that tax now they have to not that only do they have to be subject to this this these these people who did these horrible things, but then now they even have to pay their money from their their hard work. They have to give it to them. Ugh. Anyway, so so keep that picture in your mind. So these are the choices that they think they're giving Jesus. Either upset the Roman government so they come and arrest you because they think that you are um, spreading this idea that people shouldn't pay the 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 Roman poll tax. Or the other option is for him to say, um, no, no, you shouldn't, you shouldn't pay the Roman government. And, and, oh no, that was the first one. The second option is to say, yes, you should pay the Roman government. And when you say, yes, you should pay the Roman government, these people who, who despise the Roman government and despise the tax, now they think you're saying it is right to do so. It is right they conquered you. It is right you are subject to them, and it is right that you are paying for it to boot. And this would make those Jewish people that were following Jesus definitely turn away and run for the hills. They would not want to follow someone who was on the side of Caesar. So it's a trap. But Jesus saw what they were after. You hypocrites, he exclaimed. Who are you trying to fool with your trick questions? Here, show me a coin. And they handed him a penny. Whose picture is stamped on it, he asked them. And whose name is beneath that picture? It was really cool. In all space, we actually had a, a coin with a little face that looked like a little king. And under it was Caesar, so you could like visually see it. So whose and whose name is, is 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 that under there? And and they reply, Caesar's, they replied. Well then he said, Give it to Caesar if it is his, and get give, give God everything that belongs to God. His reply surprised and baffled them, and they went away. There's this idea, there's a earthly earthly kingdoms, you know, all these countries and whatever, these are earthly kingdoms. And then there's the heavenly kingdom. And these are two very, very different things. And you can't compare them to one another or merge them with each other. Um, this is apples and oranges. They're not even playing the same game. And that's what Jesus is saying here. These earthly things that are owed to this earthly person, give it. We are to, we are to follow the laws of our governments here on earth as long as it doesn't cause you to um, step outside of the love that we're called to live in. As long as it, it doesn't cause you to, to, to disobey God in that way. Um, we're, we're told this because 
we should really be as agreeable as we as we can um as long as we don't step outside of the love that we're called to live in and the reason why we should be as, as agreeable as we can is so that we can share the gospel so, so that people can see christ through us if you are fighting back about get about this and that um the those people are not going to listen to you you can just check them off the list don't even bother trying to share god's word with them because they're not going to like you they're not going to hear what you have to say so not just when it comes to the government but in every day every aspect of our lives um as long as we're not stepping outside of the love that we're called to live in we're we're, we're called to be agreeable to make people want to 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 be with us to hear what we have to say so that we can then share the message of, of Jesus. And, and, and so it's, it's, it's told, I can't remember where in the scripture, follow your worldly laws. Follow, follow the laws that the government gives you. Pray for the king. Pray that, you know, he does my will and acts in my way. Um, but... That isn't taking away from God's things. God's, what is God's, is totally different. This coin is inconsequential to God. It means nothing. To God, we give ourselves. To God, we give our hearts. To God, we give our very just being what matters, what actually matters, we give to God. The earthly inconsequential things, yeah, if your government says this is what you have to pay, then then you've got to pay it. So in saying this, he wasn't saying I'm on Caesar's side. He's saying I'm on God's side and the way he answered this, this very tricky question. And that's Matthew 22. So thank Ooh. you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> I'd like to close in prayer. And then um, just encourage everybody to, it would be really cool if you kind of like, hopefully, maybe just see someone who, who you've not met before and say hello. Um, is, is sometimes, I don't know if you remember ever being new um, to a new church, especially if you're new to a new church and you're by yourself. It can be hmm, uncomfortable. Um, and so I really encourage you, if you see someone new, uh, to, to just say hello and, and help them to feel what is true, that they are, are so very welcome here um, and wanted here, invited here. That word invite, they are welcomed and wanted. Um, and, and in doing this, it, it, it helps in that way. And you also may just make a very good friend um, in the process. So let's pray. Father God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Man, today I am just, hopefully every day I'm about gratitude, but today I'm just extra, extra about gratitude. There's so much in this day that, that you've blessed us with. And thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for, oh, man, I couldn't imagine having to, to navigate this world here now. Um, without your guidance. I couldn't imagine navigating this world here and now without your giving me what I need, the, that I am lacking these things, the strength and perseverance and, 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 and the ability to love when, it, when it's so hard to do. Maybe someone's treating us really unkindly and it's just easier to hate them. But Lord, when you live in us, you help us. Your love that you fill us with is, is the love that pours out of us. And, and Lord, we thank you for this so that we can love everyone, even the hard ones. Lord, help us to do this better every day. Because it's hard. It is. We are human. Lord, help us to put our full trust in you. Not a little trust. But everything that we know to our core, that you are our, sal your, you are our salvation. We can only be made righteous through you, period. 
Help us to not, you know, it's wobbling of faith, questioning of faith is normal and natural, and it happens. It happened to me. Lord, help those that are in this situation to know you more. Guide them to wherever they need to be, to hear what they have to hear, or read what they have to read, to understand what they have to understand, to fully grasp the truth of who you are and what you've done for us, so that they too can receive your spirit and all of the wonderful things that entails from that. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Wonderful, wonderful name. Thank you. Amen. So thank Amen. you. Thank you, everybody. Yay, Cole has made it. Yay, Jake made it. Should we do, a, should we do our picture? Oh, picture. Yes, yes. Why do I, I can't, my brain, I can never remember the picture. Wolf, I don't know what we do without you. <laughs> Oh, yes, Phantom. You're right. I forget about that thing that disappears for me, but not for everyone else. Be careful. Don't go off the edge. Phantom. I stand next to Wolf. Good job. All the, all the little all right. in the front. Good job. Good job. To be honest, I just showed up. Uh, I just got back from church myself. Uh, I'm in Scotland. I don't know. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I don't know anybody here, by the way. I just I looked, I looked up, you know, church in VR, and okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Well okay. said. Yeah, okay. wow. get in here. Ah. <laughs> hmm. No. I think they're AFK. Okay. Okay. Uh, everybody quack. Thank you, Phantom. <laughs> oh, oh, I have the new, what the you were talking team. about. Yeah. About the um the robe thing. What if it's like um since you said the robe represents Christ, what if it's someone that try to live goodly but never accepted christ in their life so they still went up there but since they didn't since they still sinned and that sin wasn't protected with christ that's why their robe was dirty and then that's why they got yeah up. yeah exactly because their faith wasn't it's not about what they did or didn't do it's not about their sin or lack thereof but no matter what there is no such thing as lack thereof because we all sin period <laughs> um that that without um accepting this jesus as the sacrifice he is um you can't receive his grace um he wants to give it to you but you have to accept it and you can't accept something that you don't believe is there so if you don't believe in him and believe what he's done for you it's you can't grab it because you don't believe it's there does that make any sense yeah yeah, yeah. well that's what came in my head when you're were, you're were talking about the examples of like theories of what that meant that's what popped in my head was someone that like you know lived decently they lived a decent good life but they you know because we all still mm -hmm. sin but they you know like someone that's like agnostic or atheist where they just like, oh, you know, I don't need Christ. But, but then that's why their robe was dirty because you still sinned. You know, they weren't dressed nice because they didn't put the yeah, face on Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like they weren't that. cleansed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's really good insight. Absolutely. Really good insight. Yeah. Thank I just you, noticed that he's Blue. wearing the Scottish kilt. I know. I and he has the most awesome Caesar's. Scottish accents. I love it. Give to it's Caesar awesome. what is Caesar's. Ah, I I I know the scripture. Hang on. Uh, I, I can't remember. Is this mm. Matthew? Yeah. Matthew. Exactly. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Good. Isn't it also right, in? Just... Is this only in well, Matthew? It's, it... This it's not in Luke no. or John or. No, I I think um they have sort of their own. Well, no, Jesus's words are. 
uh, the same in every um, everyone because obviously yes, he says I tell you quotes. the truth and he's the yeah. quotes yeah yeah anyway yeah I've I've just sort of popped up here I don't know um, anything about this place I hi everybody <laughs> hi um, hey, everybody mm-hmm. welcome Oh, Sir Flex. How do I send the friend? How do I send the friend request? Okay, everybody, welcome, I'll Sir Flex. Ah, I think we did it. Awesome, thank you, Sir Flex. So, what welcome. time is it in Scotland? Yeah, it is uh, one minute past nine. Nine. In the evening. In the morning. Ah. Not bad. Oh, in the yeah, evening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whoa, it's late, bro. Yeah, I know to me it's guys. late. Other people would be like, what is? I'm like, oh, nine o'clock, time for bed. Uh-huh. Yeah, nine <laughs> o'clock, time to wake up. Yeah, I got welding school at 7 a.m. <laughs> tomorrow morning. Oof. I gotta Oof. go to bed early. It's fun, though. I, I like love this. it. I'm enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, I, I bet. Good job. I just been myself Aww, in college. Thank you. How are Where you? coming from with that? It, Good. Yeah, I like the arc. Well, even though it's yeah. not, it was hard to start yeah. off with, but like Fantastic. I'm getting that pattern down so I'm, freaking well. Like cool. even going from <laughs> horizontal like, yeah. and vertical, mm. and then I think this week we're going really. Up, this down. is like an amazing like, day. Want, such such a good day for a good day. day. Hi. Yeah. I only got top Are you so cute? Methods, oh, I'm doing the old sit down on. accident trick. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's interesting how they yeah, how that I was works. Down. Like the freaking amps and currents running through that thing, even though yeah, it's grounded, it's awesome. yeah. making me a little uneasy. I did electrical like, mechanical like engineering. It's like we're, yeah. we're touching so, metal, it, it, and there's like electricity you know flowing Oscar? through this. I'm like, uh, uh, like, am I going to get this? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, this is why you wear like proper. I've known him for years and, and years and years. Today, yeah, he's speaking first time ever. I speak a true ever. Crew. Oh, I no. tried inviting <laughs> all my uh, online friends to this. I was like, should I do it or should I not? I was like, ah, screw it if they can do it. Oh, both the more the merrier, right? Yeah. As long as they're not right. throwing any temper tantrums or interrupting, seems fine, right? We, oh, we had someone, someone that uh, was using a text-to-speech, and they weren't even, like, talking, you know, they were, like, hiding behind the whole facade, and I was like, what? Wow, I'm like you're gonna go out and do that and not even like Hi everybody, thank you for Hi everybody, thank you for joining uh VR Church today. Uh we're gonna be raiding Cornerstone Church uh here real soon. Uh maybe just a couple minutes. I need to see if they're got their uh stream started yet. Uh they're another church that uh does ministry in VR. They also have a physical church in California uh that that, that also exists.